Once again, Tell Worlds Entertainment have been busy making those ties with the community and bringing out some more updates and blogs so we all know what's going on with the development of Mount and Blade 2 Bannerlord. But what is going on in this month's blog? Well in this month's blog we see a little bit more about the modding. Now we do know a little bit about the modding, how it's in C Sharp and how they've kind of said it'll be a lot more open to developers. But you know this is another blog that is a question and answers more than anything else, telling us a lot more information in a lot more detail. Now if you want to go and check it out there'll be a link in the description to the full thing, but I'd only really recommend that if you are a modder yourself and you want to know all the nitty gritty details. This is more of a generalization in this video of what they were talking about, less of the more details of each individual bits of codes and things that you can do, and more of just what we can expect from modders in the future. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. One of the questions was, will every piece of equipment have physics, for example like tassels and cloth and things like that, so when you're moving things will wave around in the wind, and also weapons and things like that. Now they are saying that not every piece of equipment will be able to have its own physics, but weapons can actually have them as cosmetics only. Now, we do have some information that 4K is supported, 4K textures will be able to be modded into the game as textures as well, so you will be able to play this game 4K obviously, and there will be custom skeletons and new bones, which is quite interesting, which means that we should be able to have some real time animations with different bones and different things in the body, maybe indicating towards some modding in some decapitation and things like that. I know all of you guys really love to see that, so chopping off limbs might be a possibility as well in that, because you can add these custom skeletons to meshes. Now, the AI, of course, we do know that AI are pretty bad at aiming, but you will be able to change, obviously, the accuracy, the stats of some of the AI, but also you can give them an entity to target. For example, if you're doing a bit of a scripted thing, you can get AI to shoot in a certain place for certain scripted scenarios. So this is a cool, smaller thing, but also cool nonetheless that I thought I might as well mention. Now, low level troop AI is hard coded, which means you can't really change the stats of the lower level troops, but as you go on, you can customize it somewhat by changing their aggressiveness, their maximum speed, etc and things like that. You can also give the AI movement points so they can target a place and they can move to that certain point. You can also change the formations of the battle AI, and of course modders can add new tactics and AI behaviors into the game. So yes, the base level AI is hard coded in, that cannot be changed, but furthermore throughout the game you can change certain aspects of the AI's behavior and the way you fight them in battle. So that can add for some very interesting scenarios in modded games. Now we all want to know how much we can overhaul this game. And this is a slight indication to the sheer amount that it can be overhauled. Someone asked how many factions can be in the system, and how many factions will the game actually be able to support? And an amazing answer from Tailwoods say you can add as many factions as you like. Technically creating factions is just a method call. But of course making them interesting will be the harder part. Now I love this, this means that no matter what we can get as many factions in the game as possible, but of course like they said, modders will have to make it keep it interesting, you can't just add like a hundred different factions and expect them all to be completely different. But this means that we won't have limitations, which is always nice. Now. Will we be able to do some seeds and randomized numbers in the game? This will kind of indicate towards more of procedurally generated terrain, towns, castles, villages, and also NPCs. And yes, the answer is we can use random seeds of any kind and random number generations, which is absolutely awesome. Having these procedurally generated towns and cities and things will also add to the dynamics of the game and making it different every time you come back. You don't want it to be the same game over and over again, because that's what makes a game dies. And modding is great for that. Modding means you can add overhauls because you can play in different scenarios, but also having procedurally generated places means even the base game with a few tweaks will be different each time you come back to it. Now something we did hear quite some time back, but it wasn't really gone into much confirmation about it, it was sort of a mention on the side, is how many mods you can play at the same time. We all know in Warband, you kind of have to launch one mod at a time, and that's why people went and made like the Floss Expanded mod, where they put loads of mods and put it into one mod, so you only actually had to launch the one mod. But of course that was a massive file. Here, now, you can pick and choose which mods you want to use and play within the game. Of course, some may not be compatible 
but with each other you'll have to check that I don't know how much compatibility they're going to be able to use but hopefully many many mods should be able to just be used and flow very nicely next to each other so yes we have confirmation the game will support multiple mods at the same time the number of mods I don't know if that's going to be dependent down to your system if it can run it or of course how much the game will be able to take but I guess we'll have to find that out in the future now more confirmation on the replay editor which is absolutely awesome a long long time ago a good few years back we saw this replay editor and it was probably something that i was most excited about it looks absolutely awesome so i'm very glad that that's going to be in the game and of course i'm sure modders will be able to work and fiddle with that in some way but what if you don't really know how to mod what if you want to get into modding what is there for you now this is very interesting so someone asks will we have a tail wars developer working with the community to support modding learning tools, tutorials and feedback etc. So Tail was answered with, we will share a documentation site and we are planning to make some tutorial videos. Also we will be taking feedback and engaging with users on our forums. I think this is absolutely awesome, since many games obviously they support modding but unless you know how to do it already or unless you have been taught before, it is going to be something that you are not really be able to get your hands on. But if Tail Wars are going to put out modding tutorials for their game, that is an amazing decision, not only for the community but as a business decision. Think about this. How long is your game going to last if you just let the players go and do what they want? Yes, it might last for a bit longer than it would if there wasn't modding support, but in the end, people are going to die off. The, you know, modders are going to move to other places, like they have with many games in the past. But if you get someone to teach new people, a new wave of modders and developers to come up and create their new amazing ideas, I think that is an awesome way of keeping your game alive. Because we know that so many people in the community have these wacky and weird ideas, but they don't know how to put them into action, and this way they'll be able to do that. And finally, let's have a bit of an overlook at most of, I don't know if this is everything, but at least everything that Tail Wars have said that modders will be able to use change and the various tools that you'll be able to use to make available to the modders. So this is what you're going to be able to use. Scene editors, mesh editors, material editors, model slash animation viewer, skeleton editor, replay editor, particle editor, atmosphere editor, cloth editor, path editor and of course the resource browser. Now to many of you, you might not understand what all that means but to the modders out there, that is kind of the list that you're going to be getting. Yes, maybe they'll add in more in the future but at the moment that is what we have confirmed that you guys will be able to get your hands on and get going with these mods. I think it's absolutely awesome that Tailwords have decided to put all these mods in here and to make it so available to modders. I can't wait to see how many people can come up with all these different wild and wacky things. Maybe complete overhauls, graphical enhancements, maybe changes in some mechanics. Yes, we do have confirmation that you won't be able to of course edit the hard coded stuff in the engine because of course then you'd just be able to make your whole new game and sell it for free and of course that's not going to be good for the profits of Tailworlds. But for modders out there that just want to make a Game of Thrones or Lord of the Rings or maybe even just some graphical tweaks here and there or then even changing the tactics that AI players, this will be absolutely great. I can just imagine some scenarios of having the battle of the 300 Spartans lining up. You can change these AI tactics and formations, make the Spartans more defensive and make them more likely to hold shield wars and things like that and the phalanxes like they used to. It will be really good because in Warband it tended to happen where you just go into battle and the AI would charge at you. Yes, that was fine for native, but for scenarios and things like the Spartans like I mentioned there, or the Romans who tended to fight very much in these shield wall formations in close, tight knit formations, these editors that you're going to be able to do on the AI is going to be very important for that. You're going to be able to change the certain tactics and things for each time area you're using. But what do you think about this? What are your thoughts on the modding capabilities and is there anything else here that you want to see in the future? If there's any modders out here that are watching this video, make sure you leave a comment down below. Tell me what you're thinking of doing. What mods are you thinking of making? And if not, what would you like to see? But other than that guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you come and join my Discord for all the free game giveaways and quizzes we do. It's great fun and we have a lot of banter and play a lot of games. But until then, I will see you in the next one.